An aquatic invasive species is an animal or plant that lives in the water that was brought here from outside its native habitat and it has some sort of negative impact either on our environment, economy, or on human health. These impacts include outcompeting our native plants and wildlife, degrading our property values, and impacting our recreation such as boating, fishing, and swimming. Large infestations are difficult and costly to manage and nearly impossible to eradicate. Growing up on Lake Bomazine, areas that we used to swim in that were clean and clear are now full of milfoil. The lagoon that we take our boat in and out of is full of milfoil, and it would be a shame if that happened to a lake like this. Two of the most important aquatic invasive plants to keep an eye out for are Eurasian water milfoil and water chestnut. Here's how you identify them. Water chestnut is a floating aquatic invasive plant. It has triangular leaves, air bladders in the stems, and nutlets with four spines. It blankets waterways and shades out native plants. Unlike water chestnut, Eurasian water milfoil is a submerged aquatic invasive plant. It has four feathery leaves situated in a whirl around the stem. The tip of each leaf looks like it has been clipped with scissors. Eurasian water milfoil grows into thick mats which choke out native species. To learn how to identify the rest of them, visit our website or attend one of our aquatic invasive plant trainings. If you're unsure of the plant sample that you collected, you can send it into APIP for identification. To survey for aquatic invasive plants, we paddle in a zigzag pattern along the shoreline until we find a plant bed. Be sure to cover from the shoreline to about 30 feet out or 15 feet in depth. When you find a plant bed, perform a rake toss to find out what species are present. Throw the weed rake into the plant bed, let it sink to the bottom, and then slowly pull it back in. Once you've pulled the rake back into the boat, begin to identify each of the collected plant specimens. Aquatic invasive species are, for the most part, spread from lake to lake via the overland transport of boats and their trailers. To stop the spread of aquatic invasive species, there are some simple steps that people can take, and that is to make sure that their boat is clean, drain, and dry before entering a new water body. To clean your boat, you first look around the outside for any attached animals or plants running your hand along the outside of the boat, feeling for any bumps, which may be aquatic invasive animals. It's important to check the wheel well, the axle, and the wires attached to it running underneath the boat, as well as the brake lights, and any other place where aquatic plants may catch as you pull the boat out of the water. So once you've collected all the aquatic plant material off the boat, you can dispose of them in the aquatic invasive species disposal station or in a garbage receptacle. The next step is to drain any standing water in your boat. First, pull your bilge plug to drain any water in your bilge. Next, lower your motor to allow the water to drain. Live wells should also be drained. Be sure to check your anchor for any attached mud or plants and clean that as well. The next step is to dry your boat. Make sure to allow it to sit out in the sun for at least five days. For smaller watercraft, another option is to towel dry. If you don't want to wait the five days before boating again, bring your boat to one of the free boat wash stations in the Adirondacks. So to do the exterior decontamination, we use high pressure, hot water, to remove any aquatic vegetation or aquatic animals that may be attached to the hull. When we do a bilge flush, we remove the bilge plug, drain any water that may be in the bilge, and then use 120 degree low pressure water to rinse out the bilge. 120 degrees is necessary to kill any aquatic invasive species that may be present in the bilge. Then we do a motor flush, so we have the, uh, the boat owner drop their outdrive to drain any water that's in it and use an infrared thermometer to make sure that the water coming out of the exhaust port is at least 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we move on to any equipment that may be damp. Any equipment that is damp is rinsed in 120 degree water to kill any aquatic invasive species that may be present. 
Once the decontamination is complete, we move to the front of the vessel and attach an inspection tag, which verifies the vessel has passed the inspection or has been decontaminated and can now launch safely into any Adirondack lake. If you've been fishing, make sure to dispose of your bait properly, as well as inspecting your fishing equipment for any attached animals or plants. If you've collected the bait from that lake, it can be returned to the same lake. However, if you've purchased the bait from a certified bait dealer, it should be disposed of in the trash can. It's important to remember that it's New York State law to clean, drain, and dry your boat before launching. Here in the Adirondacks, our economy is based on our natural resources, so it's very important that we keep our lakes clear of invasive species so we can continue to enjoy these resources now and for our future generations. Do your part to protect Adirondack waters. Clean, drain, and dry your boat.